Rebecca Madrigal. And you're the mother of? I'm the mother of Deja Marie Guzman, the young lady that was killed here in this motel room. My name is Jessica Madrigal, and my Deja, her name is Deja Marie Guzman. And how old is she? 20 years old. 20 years old? She would have been, um, next month she would be turning 22. So can you tell me why you're here? I'm here because my daughter was killed in 2022 um, by a young man who was her boyfriend. She was killed. They were in the room. She was laying down on a sofa and he was playing with the gun or, well, he aimed it at her and discharged and shot her in the hip. And this happened where? This happened here in this motel in room 324. Um, and about a year ago? It's on um, August 21st was a year. So how did you feel when this first happened? I was broken. I was in, I was in shock and disbelief because how can this happen to my baby? Deja's a good person. Deja, Deja had her whole life ahead of her. Deja was in school. She was in college. She was about to graduate. Did the cops tell you anything initially after this happened? I mean, how did you find out? So... Me and Deja were texting. Me and Deja were texting. I had pulled a double at work, and we, she had texted me. She knew I, I was working a night shift, so she texted me, and she asked me if we were going to go to church, and I told her, yeah. And I told her um, that, that I was pulling the double and that, um, you know, that we would talk in the morning or whatever. So then in the early morning, um, she texted me. She goes, Mama, are we going to church? And I said, yes. And she said, okay. And then so I jumped in the shower, and then I got out of the shower and then I looked at the messages to see if she had texted me or called me or and then she and there was a message from her saying mama I'm not gonna go she goes um, I'm not gonna go after all but you could take my car and then I was like okay I was like well you're not gonna go and then I was like well I'm not gonna go either then I'm gonna go to sleep so then I fell asleep and I woke up at 9 45 and I tried texting or messaging her like calling her through messenger and she didn't answer and I just figured she was asleep and then I called her again about like 1 o'clock, 1.20 or something, and then she didn't answer me again. Usually Deja will, Deja will answer me back. She'll call me, she'll see a missed call from me, and she'll call me back or she'll text me, I'm sleeping, Mom, or, or whatever. Mm. Um, about 3-something again, I called and nothing. And so then I was just kind of, well, you know, she'll call me or something. I didn't think anything. Um, and she didn't contact me or nothing. And then about 6.24, I got a call from investigators, and um, he was all, he's all, we need to talk to you in person, um, we need to know where you're at, and I was like, for what? Like, I don't understand what's going on, you know, and then he's all like, well, we need to talk to you in person, we need to speak to you in person. So I told them where I was at, and um, they came down, they came down, and then they were asking me that when was the last time I talked to Deja, when was the last time I seen her, and all this stuff, and I, and I told them, I messaged her this morning. And then there, um, I was just like, what's going on? What's going on with my daughter? Like, where's she at? You know, what's going on? And I was like, she was at the motel with, with Chris, Start with Christopher. Panicking. Yeah, and then he's all like, oh, so you, you, you know that she was with Christopher. I go, yeah, I go, why? What's going on? You know, and then he, they were just looking at me and on one of the detectives face, I could tell something was wrong. And then I was just like, what's the matter? Like, where's my daughter? Like, where's my daughter? And he just looked at me and I was like, is something wrong with her? Did something happen to her? And then he, he kind of like, the face gesture that he gave me was just like, something was bad. And then I just started like freaking out. And I was like, is my daughter gone? Like, is she dead? You know, what's going on? And then he was just like, yes, ma'am. And my son was at the fence of where I was at. And he saw me like, just lose my, my everything. Just everything just drained out of me. And he ran to me and I just fell. It's hard. It's hard. I'm sorry you had to go through that that way. And then I wanted to go see her, and they said I couldn't see her. And I told them that how did they get the information? How did they know that it was me? That was her mother. How did they know that that was Deja? And he was all like through through the hospital information, through her tattoos, and and I was like, I want to see my baby, but they were like, we can't let you see her because it's evidence. Everything is evidence right now. Her body is evidence. And then. Um, so then when I when so that happened and then they said, you know, that they would contact me with more information if they needed or if they needed any information for me, they would contact me. And in the days coming, I, I, I was contacting them a lot and I was telling them, like, I need I, I want to be I want to see my daughter.
There was money missing. She had money on her. That, that money is gone. My son's laptop was in there. That, that's gone. Investigators said that there was nothing like that there. Um, they said that he had money in his wallet, but that's who's to say whose it was. But the amount of money she had, she had like three, four thousand dollars and that money was gone. So you're um, saying money was stolen or well, allegedly something because where is it at? You know, and that that tells me that in the time frame from 904 gun, it was reported that gunshot was at 904. She was pronounced dead at 941. And that time right there, ambulance came. The ambulance is right down the street. You know, they the hospital is right. It's two minutes away in ambulance. St. Agnes. You know, yeah, St. Agnes Hospital. So, I mean, the ambulance came. They tried to. I, I know they didn't. They weren't here 30 minutes trying to resuscitate her. I know that they weren't here 30 minutes trying to. They, you know, they're going to try to hurry up, get her to a place where they can go ahead and transport her. I know for the gunshot fired, she was pronounced dead at 9:41 at St. Agnes. So in that time. The uh, how long did he take to bring her down from the motel? Because he didn't call 911. The people at the front desk called 911. Mm -hmm. So he whatever time it took him to bring her from the from upstairs to downstairs to the lobby, nine, the ambulance was called then. How many times was the gun shot? They said the gun was shot twice. The and how many times was she hit? So from what I know, she was hit one time in the hip. They said in the in the in the report it says it says that the lower extremities, and so then I didn't understand what they meant by lower extremities, and then eventually, basically, she was shot in the hip. So what did the shooter say at first? What was his story? His story was that it was that she shot herself, and then but through investigation, Deja was laying on the sofa. She was laying on a, on a like a love seat, and was shot in the hip, and then that she she felt. She was all like, did you hit me? And then he's all like, I don't know. He's all, let me see, get up, you know? And then, so she got up and then he helped her up and then he saw like a hole on the side. And so then he was all like, let's go get you help. And so then that supposedly that's their story that he tried getting her help and walking out of the, um, of the room. And then that she just started going limp. Like she just started going limp. And then that he um, helped her to the thing. But in the video that I seen, in the video that I seen, he wasn't holding her. He was dragging her face down, like she, like dragging he had his, her from where? He, um, he was coming out of the elevator with her, and his his arms were wrapped around her like this under her under her arms right here, and he was like pulling her out of the elevator. So she was face down, mm -hmm. and he was basically dragging her out of the elevator. Basically, to to where? To the lobby. And the lobby are the ones who called. And law the enforcement. lobby, the lobby girl. Whenever the doors open, he's bringing her out, and one of the lo one of the girls in the in the front office right here, they um, they were like, oh my gosh, and then they called 911, and then the other girl was coming into work barely, and she she was like, what's going on? And then they they both came to her aid. One of the girls, and I'm not sure which one, but one of them was holding her like they they got her in, in her in their arms and they were holding her while she was laying on the ground. And then Jordan was um, like that he was panicked, he didn't know what to do. And it, it, she said one of the girls said that he it almost seemed like he wanted to leave, like he wanted to leave, but that he didn't leave, like he knew he couldn't. And then that she told him put pressure, put pressure. You need it, you know, like that he was like right there messing around like with the with the with the wound. And then she's all like leave that alone. She goes put pressure on it. And so then he started putting pressure on it. Mm -hmm. And she said that, that he seemed like he was trying to help her a little bit. But um, but at first, no, that it seemed like he wanted to leave, like he didn't even want to be there. And then, um, and then the EMS came, and then they took over. And um, so the cops, they, they locked him up the same day? Yeah, he got arrested the same day. What did they charge him with? He, involuntary manslaughter because the investigators had told me that it really did look like it was an accident that everything the way it seems it really did look like an accident but then when we went to the first first court hearing that's when the DA said no she goes um, that they that through investigation they, they found out that the gun was shot twice and that they would like for him to be held and arrested but the judge said no because no I can understand the first shot possibly being accidental now a second shot well, why was the gun shot twice i think a second shot should have been murder what do you think and how do you feel about that 
The fact that the fact that he said it was an accident and the fact that he that he shot the gun twice, that's not an accident. You it's know, not. it's not an accident, period. I mean, there's no way around that. Um, not even if you try to try to think why. No, there's there's nothing. There's nothing that would say, yeah, that was an accident. So how many shots need to be shot out of a gun before it proves not an accident, right? You know, five points that they tell you you have to know to own a gun. One of them being you never point a gun at somebody unless you have intent to shoot it. Okay. Now, why was he pointing the gun at my daughter? Okay. The fact that he pointed the gun to her says that he had intent because that's what you're supposed to assume because of the four points that the gun safety rules. Okay. Now, two, um, it, it, you never, you never, you always assume that a gun has is, is is loaded. You always assume a gun is loaded. He said that he didn't know that the gun was loaded. You're supposed to assume a gun is loaded. Does he? Was was he drinking or on drugs? How does he no. not know if his own gun was loaded? That's that's my thing. Is that you 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 know the rules, you know you know the do's and don'ts, and obviously it was so important for you to hold to have a license so you can have a gun. Then why didn't you follow the rules? Well, yeah, in my opinion, the the, the killing proves that he should have never had the gun license to begin with because it's no. supposed to help you maintain and 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 have that firearm for a reason. But right offhand, he broke all four points, right. okay? Now, my thing is, and this is the law that I want to be passed, is I want people, not only do you have to take that test to be able to own a gun, but you have to take a BLS class basic life skill and how many children have died to that how many other kids have died from the day that Deja passed away from the moment my daughter died till today every single day there has been children somebody's child dying to a gunshot whether it be gang related whether it be an accident whether it be a drive-by whether it be whatever every single day domestic whatever people are dying okay and when it is an accident, they don't know how to save their life. They don't know, you know, you don't move a body. You don't move somebody that's been injured. You call immediately, call 911. I want to assume that a lot, everybody has common sense. Maybe not everybody does, okay? I don't own a gun. I don't handle guns. I don't mess around with guns. But I do know that if someone is injured, whether it be an animal bite, a gunshot, a car hit, whatever, you don't move that person and you call 911 immediately, immediately so they can come and help them. At least she could have told us what had happened. You know, anything. Nothing got done. He, everything that was supposed to happen did not happen. And that's my, that's my anger. That's my, that's my, like, I need justice for my daughter. So, so what have you I been, need to be her voice. What have you been doing to be her voice and, and, and to get some of that anger out in a good, positive way? What have you been doing? We've been protesting. Um, we've been going down to the courthouse, and I got a really big family, and they're all supporting us. We're we're, we're being supported. We're so going what, out. So, what exactly is some of your messages? I mean, what do you want people to know exactly? I want to. I, I want gun. I want there to be new laws. Like, not only do you need to be registered to own a gun, but you need. There's more rules that have to be applied. Mm -hmm. So then they make it so easy for someone to own a gun. Okay, there's a lot of people that don't own guns that have guns, but it's not even about that. It's about the people that are registered. That there needs to be more laws applied. I'm not against people owning guns. Is that they need to have basic life skills, so they could know what to do in case of an accident. That's what I want. So I mean, if you could say something to the prosecutors and the judge, what what would you want them to do regarding her case? Because they're representing her. I want them to know. I want them to put themselves in my shoes. I want them to put themselves in my shoes. If this was their daughter, if they have a 20-year-old daughter, a 15, a 15 to 30-year-old child, what would they be doing? What would they want for their child? What justice would they want for their child? Because my daughter, as of last year, her whole life has stopped. My life has stopped. I move every single day, barely. I have to work because I have a family and I have to pay bills. I move every single day. Every single day I wake up and I don't have my daughter. My, me and my daughter were like, she was my best friend. 
she was the one I would call and I would talk to her and she would give me advice and I would give her advice and this is our plan baby this is what we're gonna do I don't have that she was my only daughter I have four sons and one daughter she was my baby she was the last child she was my only daughter I don't have that no more they took that he took that from me her whole life every all the plans that we had they're gone for the judge and for the DA for everybody that hears what if it was your daughter? What if it was your daughter's life taken? What if it was your daughter? They would probably want it prosecuted for murder instead of you know, manslaughter. I think I, that's what I think. If it was their child. I feel that I feel that that they need to put themselves in my shoes and know how I feel because my daughter truly, truly was my best friend. So my daughter was my gift from God, you know. She was a blessing from the get-go. She was my best friend. Ultimately, at the end of this case, when this case is all over, said and done with, what would you want to see happen with this case? What would you like to happen? I would like for him, because he, see, as we are right now, he's looking at maybe nine years, okay? He's 22 years old. 23 probably already because a year has gone by you know so he'll be 31 32 whenever whenever he gets out you know if that's what they give him and what if this happens again maybe not by his hands but what if it happens again they could have stopped in the first time. okay what if it happens again and someone else's child is killed in this manner so you know and i and i and I try to think about them too, about about because I have kids his age. So I want I want justice to be served. I want him to sit and to uh, every single day remember what he did from being irresponsible. Okay, he could have had thought that beforehand, and why he didn't assume or think, you know what, I shouldn't be playing with a gun. Okay, for whatever reason he felt he needed a gun. I get it. I understand that. Fresno is is crazy and it's wild. I understand. But if you're not out there, out there being wild and stuff, mm -hmm. then you don't, you don't, and you're being productive, then you don't necessarily have to be having a gun to protect your life, you know? I want him to sit there and understand what he did. He took someone very valuable. For how long? What, what's justice to you in this case? Well, according to the law, according to the law, 15 to life is 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 the, the max it's the max for manslaughter I, for manslaughter okay so i mean I, and i'm not trying to be selfish but 15 15 years to sit there and, and reflect on what you did that's gonna and then when he gets out he'll be older so then he'll have be able to become a man and a responsible man hopefully god's willing you know um, do you think that'll be enough? You I don't think, think I don't think him? I don't think anything will ever be enough because I'll never have justice. No matter how much life he get, no much how much time he does, will never bring justice to me. Will never bring peace. Will never bring my daughter back. Whether he does a day in prison, whether he does fifty years in prison, nothing's bringing my daughter back. My daughter's life is forever taken. The only chance I have of seeing my daughter again is being in heaven, going to heaven and, and seeing my daughter then. You know, I feel like she had her whole life ahead of her. And he took that. He took that from her. He took it from her. He's, he took that from all of us. My niece, my nieces, my, my grandchildren, she was such a big impact on all of their lives. If they were all here right now, you would see how much impact she had on their life. They cry. They, they randomly will text me. Tia, we miss her. You know, I wish we had Deja, so because Deja was always trying to give the kids advice, always trying to be there for them, to help them make better choices and everything. They don't get that. They're, not, they're never gonna have that again. What's the one thing you love the most about Deja? Her heart, her ambition. I, there's much more than just one thing. There's so much. 
She had so much drive. She had so much ambition. She, <laughs> she had a heart of gold. And it's not, I'm not trying to be cliche, but my daughter truly, truly had a heart of gold. She, she loved everybody. Even after the case is over, you still gonna be her voice? Forever. Forever. Till the day I die. Stop. Never gonna stop. Till the day I die. That's right. Till the day I die. This is my baby. This is my baby. Forever. And for the people Long that live are, Deja. For the people that are watching this, what what would you like to tell them? Prior to this happening, prior to this happening, prior to um, prior to my daughter's life being taken, I didn't. I heard of cases. I saw parents being hurt. I saw people hurting their loved ones. You know, just a year before um, Alize, the little girl that got gunned down on 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 Belmont. on Belmont. Okay, my heart went out to them. You know, you don't know them, so then you don't really know what's the do's and don'ts. What, what can you do? Can you reach out to them? Can you be a part of, of their hurt? You know, you don't know, you know, and so you kind of keep a distance. But I pray for them. I always prayed for them, you know, and then this happened to my baby. And I'm in the exact same shoes as them. I'm in the exact, I met her mom at court mm -hmm. and I hugged her and the dad, you know, and all my heart just hurt for them. Double now because now I know exactly how it feels, you know? And everybody needs to know what we all, all as human beings, because we're all human, we all really, really need to put our, our, ourselves in people's shoes. That's right. We need to because you asked me right now, after, after everything's said and done and everything gets done and everything, what am I going to keep doing? I'm going to be protesting my baby's name. I'm going to be screaming Deja loud. Okay, and I'm gonna, I, wanna, I want that law to pass and I want them to pay, make a bill. I, wanna, I don't know how to go about it. I don't know how do we go about petitioning. I don't, know how, I don't know all of that stuff, but I need people to reach out to me and let me know what do I got to do, how do I go about it. So like that, we can go ahead and people that own guns, not only do they get to go and take their little test to, to, you know, to make that, that their psych is okay, but they also need to learn BLS. They need to go sit in a class and learn basic life skills so like that they can know how to save a life just in case their gun accidentally goes off. Like I said before, I'm not against people owning guns because that's our right. We're Americans. We're allowed, you know, we're, we're able to, we want to live free. Mm -hmm. I, I want that too. I'm an American. My daughter was an American. Mm -hmm. My daughter didn't deserve to get killed by a gun that was legally registered. Legally registered doesn't give you the right to go ahead and shoot a gun and that's going to give leniency to your sentence. That is, that is so backwards and I don't know why it makes it good on their end. That does not make sense to me at all. The fact that you are a registered gun holder and she was not violating you, she was not entering your premises without permission, she was not stealing from you, she was not hitting you, she wasn't, she wasn't hurting you and you discharged the gun and you killed her. She was laying on a sofa. She's innocent. And she was your girlfriend. And supposedly nothing was going on in that motel room, so then why did she die at the hands of a registered gun? That's that's out that's of all my, people, a registered gun owner. That's my thing. That's that's what I want, and that's why I want that bill passed. And they need they need to enforce more gun laws. There, it can't just be oh, go take a test. Okay, you understand, you know how to shoot a gun. No, that cannot, that, there's, that doesn't make sense to me at all. It doesn't fit in my head mm -hmm. that that's all they need to own a gun. You're supposed to have a gun to protect yourself. You're supposed to be responsible. So if you break all those rules, then you, you, should, be, you should be charged accordingly. Well, yeah, that's great that you're doing this. Hopefully other victims or people will come together because, yeah, it's not just one child. This is a social problem. It's happening with all She's the children. She's not the only one. Yeah. She's not the only one that's been killed like this. And we could say what we want. Um, Jordan could say whatever he wants. But there's evidence. Okay, and, and, and I'm hoping to God 
the DA sees this and I'm hoping to God that she and, and I've spoken to her and I've spoken to the investigator. You know, I pray to God that they put themselves in my shoes and know my pain. I know that this is their job and they've seen trillions of cases like this. So it kind of it's like when you, when it, whatever job you do. It kind of becomes secondhand. You already know, and you, you just kind of go with the flow type of thing. Th no, don't take my baby's case like that, please. What if it was your child? What it could they? easily be your child in 10 years yeah. if you got babies. Yeah. It could easily be your child in two years. Two days prior to this happening, or a day prior to this happening, I had posted a prayer of all the gun violence that I had been seeing. Mm -hmm. And I was praying and I and I asked for prayers to protect all of the families out there that are suffering through this stuff. Two days before my daughter got shot with the gun and died. I would have never thought that that was going to happen. And it happened. And not even not she wasn't just she's not even just a gunshot victim. She died.